understand what I'm saying? Because this will be a hard gig, you know, because it's uh, because you don't know what's going on. Okay, you know, you see the show goes up, all the pictures have red dots on them. They all sold just like before, but you don't know what they sold for. Do you, do you understand? You don't know if they sold for 35 cents or 35 million. You have no idea. Uh, you know, the, 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 the world is, is uh, the art world is, is coming unglued, but I think it's coming unglued because of its obsession with supply side input. That's just, that's just my view. Uh, anybody else? Is where? Uh, how would you know if you saw them? I mean, how not, would I know them? No, no, I mean, you're talking about somebody to be honest, I probably wouldn't because I'm an old guy. No. Because you know, what I'm saying is, how would you know them? You would know them because that's your business. Now, I might not know them. The I, I have a question, Ron. Okay. How would you see them if they were alone in their room making paintings? It's the mechanism is. That's what I mean. That's why I'm saying I'm sure they're out there. I haven't seen them. But I'm saying that we need to find them. Uh, and But I will admit that if you showed me the art of tomorrow, I probably wouldn't recognize it because I'm too old. Uh, do you understand? I, I know when I was a critic who was your age, and I looked at people who were my age, I knew they were clueless. And now that I'm my age, I know that I'm clueless. You know what I mean? I mean, you just say that the next great art may be dust bunnies. That was my idea. You know, named dust bunnies like Rollo and Laszlo. You know, and you put up exhibitions where they're under your couch, you know, and you raise the couch. You know, I mean, you could be fucking famous. Uh, but, uh, you know, Laszlo the dust bunny could be on the cover of time. But I don't think so, and if you showed it to me, I wouldn't like it, probably. Okay, do you have any other questions? Well, the thing is, I mean, what I like in a graduate student is knowingness and, and uh, it's hipness. I don't like to mention names to students who have never heard of them. Uh, it's like I don't have time to explain. Uh, and so, and I think that that's, uh, that's very important. And in a sense, this is your professor's responsibility to keep you up to speed. But they don't because they've been afraid to leave Des Moines for years because they've forgotten where everything is in New York and they remember Chelsea, but they've never, you know, whatever. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, my problem with, with graduate schools is just that they can't prepare you to do anything but build toxins. You know what I mean? I mean, that's who's teaching, that's where they come from. Uh, Yes, I think so. Now, Peter Plagan said that once. He said he loved the university and regarded it as a great whore that gave him money. And uh, I tend to agree with that. Uh, is anybody else? Okay. Um, you were talking about uh, the foregoing happiness for uh, the sake of the camera. Um, right. Well, let me put it like this. On the scale between contentment and ecstasy, my idea of happiness is closer to ecstasy. The feeling and the drug. Uh, uh, I rank contentment along with the virtues of composure in paintings and with people. I don't particularly care about it. And so, uh, but, that, that, but I, I think that, you know, you have to understand how many people, one of the things I discovered in Nashville when I was writing songs there is that, you know, so many of these guys I was competing against in writing songs really come from dirt poor backgrounds. And I, you know, and, and they are so happy to be content. You know, is that uh, my friend Frank Dykus, who's the countryest person, who's so country we called him Disco Dykus. Uh, but, uh, and he was living in a trailer, he's making a lot of money, he wrote half George Strait songs. And, uh, and we asked him why he didn't move into a house, and he said, Dave, I'm so happy just to be poor rather than destitute. <laughs> you understand? And so, 
that creates a fairly conservative, creative population in Nashville. Bright people, though. Uh, I think that's. I think that's what I mean. One yeah. more question. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> disaster. <laughs> Total freaking disaster. Uh, you know, my neighborhood can't decide whether it wants to be, you know, uh, an empty neighborhood or a barrio. You know, it's, they, they get up every morning and try to decide. Uh, there's uh, almost, uh, that is, uh, Vegas was built on junk ponds and that world's gone, you know, so. Uh, I, I, I have, um, but to me, I like that because I think the first time I drove into Vegas this time, you know, as an adult knowing I was going to live there, you know, it's Nevada. Nevada has five times more ghost towns than it has towns. <laughs> Do you understand? And I looked at it and I thought, this looks like one of those Roman ruins in North Africa with the Atlas Mountains up behind it. You know, I mean, I could see it in its decadent state even then. And now we have a lot more see-through buildings and decadent shit there. And uh, we're hoping that this increases the hooker population. <laughs> uh, we all have our dreams. Uh, anyone else? I'm, I know that this is uncomfortable for you. It's not making me feel that way. Yes. I was, I was saying that beauty lost its importance? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just... My question was, you're talking about how beauty lost its importance in the 70s and 80s, and then You mean women's art? Just women being involved with power or being involved in arts. Uh, all the women I know are involved with power, mostly <laughs> over me. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but that's okay. The last time I made a decision, it was the wrong one. Um, <laughs> no, I think that the reason that art veered from beauty is because virtue paid better. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the, the foundations and the alliances and the organizations and the universities. and the, uh, That is, uh, if you could show something that was guaranteed to make everybody a better person, you know, uh, you could get the money. Uh, and so I think it, there was a situation, and it's a pure market situation, uh, in the sense that there was a period there where uh, you couldn't sell good-looking paintings, but you could sell a pile of leaves uh, stuck to a giant piece of ice like Raphael Ferrer, or, you know. Uh, and if, uh, and also, it was the times, you know. It was cheap. Uh, we like to be cheap with our art. And uh, anyway, I thank you very much. Yes, sir, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, what, what are you reading right now? Any book, anything in particular? I'm reading... Uh, I'm teaching uh, Rob Grier and Samuel Beckett and uh, Cortazar's Hopscotch, and I'm making half my students read Hopscotch one way and the other one half read it the other way, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm reading Samuel Beckett's letters, which are just great, and not nearly the bummer that the books are. And so, anyway, thanks a lot, guys.